So, my hair was growing back a little bit, and I didn't realize how much until I tried to use the clippers to trim a little bit, and then a whole chunk of it was gone, and if anyone wonders what the upsides are besides sh saving a lot on shampoo and hair drying really quick after the shower, another great upside is being able to go like this. This video is sponsored by Raycons, and... My plan for this video is to take a piece of this Bristol paper, like so, comes right out. Take a piece of this Bristol paper, we might need more than one piece, we'll see. And to do a bit of a doodle demo, a study into how my doodles have been working lately. I know the title, the title I'm planning on putting on this video is something about the two stages of every doodle or something like that. It might not turn out that way. We'll see. Um, but what I've, I think I've mentioned this before. What happens is in my doodles, my drawings, I don't know if I... Do you think I talk down to my doodles at all? My drawings by calling them doodles? I personally think that a doodle is not less... It's not a lesser form of art, okay? A doodle can be high art. I'm trying to raise doodles up and not bring drawings down by calling them doodles. You know what I mean? It, doodles can be great things. Basically what happens is I draw for a while. I doodle aimlessly without goal. I, I wander off across the paper with my pen. And then at some point, maybe somewhere between halfway and two-thirds or three-quarters of the way through the drawing, I realize that it's looking like something. The pareidolia. I don't know how I say that, if it, that's how you say the word, but I think I mentioned it in another video recently. Um, my human mind recognizes a shape, a form, hey, that looks like something, right? And then I think, hey, why don't I kind of embrace it and go ahead and make it look like that? So, I mean, there are some other examples you might have noticed recently where I take it and I, it kind of looks like a weird morphed, messed up version of that thing. And it's not that I went and tried to draw that thing weird. It's that I drew the weird part first and then tried to wrap the weirdness and it tried to wrap the, the thing around the weirdness, if that makes any sense. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a few examples where I, I draw the weird, I, I, I draw the doodle, and then I'm going to stop. Once I, I reach that point where I think I see something, I'm going to stop, and we're going to look at it together, and I'm going to say what I think it looks like and where I think I might go with it next. We'll talk about it together, and then we'll go on, and then we'll go on to the next piece. Because usually I just, when we watch these videos, um, it's all just a kind of seamless transition, and I know in my head when I'm doing it, but usually you guys don't really know uh, when it's happening, right? So I just want to be a little bit clearer about it. And of course, in the title it says all doodles, but um, of course that was a bit of a stretch. It's not everyone that does this. It's mostly just me, but maybe other people do. Let me know if you have any kind of weird trends of like little mental processes that happen like this in your doodles. I'm going to use this Bristol paper, which is, I like it because it's like kind of sturdy. You can hear it, right? It's kind of like cardstock. And I use, excuse me, a Rotring Isograph. Now, I don't know if Ray J knew he was going to be sponsoring something like a doodle demo video, but I appreciate it. Raycons are ridiculous. They start at about half the price of anything else on the premium wireless earbud market. Even celebrities like P. Diddy, the other P. Diddy besides me, are obsessed with them. They come in a compact carrying case that can charge earbuds four times on a single charge and sound just as amazing as other top audio brands. So happy to have two new friends. Hey, buds. Raycons are great for working out or doing anything where you don't have to disturb your neighbors, your roommates, or significant other. Their everyday E25 earbuds are the best model yet. 
with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. Plus, they come in like five different exciting colors. <sighs> Click the link in the description to get 15% off your order. All right, so I'm just wondering if we should have a name for the two parts, the two steps of each doodle. Like, should it be like the mushy part and the concrete part? Or the abstract and the... What's the opposite of abstract? I'm looking it up on, on thesaurus.com. The actual, the abstract and the actual. I kind of like those. I feel like now that I don't have any hair, it's like easier to make funny faces or like my face feels for more expressive or something like that. Is that true or not? It might be true. I can, I can see you. Okay. Now I'm all hyped up. All right, everyone. I woke up this morning. I fried myself some breakfast. By that, I mean I, I fried eggs. That's my preferred way to have eggs these days. When I was growing up, fried eggs were disgusting to me and I preferred scrambled eggs, but now scrambled eggs don't do a lot for me, and I really prefer them fried. Sometimes I've been doing the eggs in a basket thing, which I think I've made a video about, about how to make eggs in a basket, where you punch out a hole in the center of a piece of bread and put that in the skillet and then drop an egg in there without the shell, of course, and fry it that way, flip it over, you know, but sometimes I've been doing that lately, but sometimes I just do the eggs, but then this morning... I cracked three eggs into the skillet. Is that too many, by the way? Sometimes I just do two. Sometimes I do three. I don't know. I, I'm not sure how many eggs is good for you or bad for you. And Beauty and the Beast, Gaston, he would, he would eat like 12 dozen eggs, and he would eat them with the shells on. Or maybe one dozen, which is 12. Uh, anyways. Anyways, one of my eggs was a... Uh, uh, had had two yolks in there. So that was a little treat. So I got basically got a twofer with that one. Is that basically a twin in there? Did I eat a did I eat twins? So I'm trying to figure out. They I think basically what I've noticed is if you buy the like the extra large or larger type eggs, because you can get like regular eggs at the grocery store, right? Or like extra large and large deluxe eggs. I feel like the larger the eggs are, the more likely they are to have double yolks in them. Maybe if I got like the, the mega size eggs, I, I could have a higher, like maybe I could get a whole carton of the double yolks. But also I don't really want double yolks because the yolks are smaller. And so as I fry them, as I cook them, it makes it so the yolks cook quicker so as I cook them there's less li they're less likely to be runny at the end of the whole cookie cooking process and I like the yolks to still be runny because then I can you know like move the especially if I do eggs in a basket I can still move them around mop everything up and use the bread to mop up some of the runny egg yolkiness oh it's so good that's the part I thought was disgusting when I was younger and I admit it sounds disgusting especially when I describe it all right let's look at how this first part of the drawing went All right, so here it is. I've reached a point in this uh, first drawing where I think I know. <clears throat> excuse me. I think I know where I want to go with it. As so, sorry about the angle of this, by the way. As you can see, this is what this is what straight up looks like. But I have the camera at a weird angle because if it was looking straight down, then my hand would kind of be covering up everything I'm doing. Uh, hope that's okay. I apologize if it makes you a little bit nauseous or uneasy or something. Anyways, so for a while here at the beginning, this really looked like some sort of um, landscape at a while. 
landscape for a while, but I kind of fought against that, all right? I could have stopped, I could have embraced the landscape, but I tried to buck it off. Um, and now I just kind of kept on drawing stuff aimlessly. And now once I got to this point with this little thing here, and then I drew this line around here and I realized this looks like some kind of weird alien head here, right? And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going. Maybe I'm going to put some sort of weird tool or a gun in his hand here. Maybe it'll be a magical device and a lot of this stuff will be flowing up out of it. Maybe this right here will be part of it. Maybe this will be a background. Maybe some of this will be part of a landscape behind him or something. I don't know. But yes, this will be like a little guy and he's going to be holding something here maybe. And we'll keep going. He'll have like a little mouth right here. and Maybe a little eye poking out here. I'm not sure what's going on here. So that's how I'm going to move forward with the drawing. This is like my little turning point into being a little bit more intentional with it. Right? All right. Let's keep going. All right. I will say that lately I've been trying to figure out a few new hobbies for myself. In a, in a previous video, I did mention that I want YouTubing and drawing to eventually become more of a hobby for me again instead of a a job or a, a career or whatever. Uh, but that's a little bit of a long-term, more of a long-term goal. But right now, I'm trying to figure out a few more active hobbies for myself so I don't have as much of a, a purely sedentary lifestyle, right? I'm, I want to be a little more active, healthy, so I don't just sit around uh, gradually becoming fatter and fatter and more and more unhealthy and then just eventually become one of those people in uh, Wally, you know, just a big blob, just sitting here staring at screens all day, right? So, I mean, I was making some changes. I mean, I, I do, you know, go out and play some sports with my friends on the weekends and stuff, and that's good. Uh, and it was also better during the school year because I was walking to and from classes in different buildings and uh, I would walk to lunch and stuff like that. It's been a little bit, of course, you know, the whole quarantine thing has been weird on everybody. That's been a weird change. But, you know, I bought a, I bought a bike, which I've been riding sometimes a little less now. I guess that didn't really stick as much as I wanted to. Uh, but also one thing I tried to pick up was I tried to start taking tennis lessons, uh, which I thought would be cool. I thought it would be really cool. And I took about three tennis lessons before I had to, before I had to stop. The tennis lessons were going great. I mean, I found this guy, uh, his name was Jeff, and he was like the most like classic, I mean, like stereotypical, I'm, I'm, he was like a stereotype in the best way possible. If like, if you imagine like a kind of like mid to middle aged to old, slight, he, he's maybe middle aged, but had like graying hair and a beard, and he had like the visor on or a headband. Like, if you imagine like a tennis coach in like a stereotypical tennis movie, this is what he looked like. Like, he a hundred percent looked the part and acted the part, and it was awesome, right? Like if I imagined what a tennis coach wanted, I wanted to look like for me, that's a, that's exactly what I got. And I was excited about it. And he was teaching me, you know, I was learning like a forehand, I was learning two hand backhand. And then it wasn't like feeling, I was like, I don't know about this two hand backhand. And I was like talking to him and we we're learning. I kind of was starting to switch to the one hand backhand. And it was really cool. He was, he was like bouncing balls to me from like right next to me. And, you know, a little bit in front of me, across the court, and all these different things. We were chatting about different popular tennis players. It was going great. And I I was starting from like ground zero. I have never, I, I didn't even know how, how to hold the racket correctly, right? Uh, the most I've ever done with tennis is pretty much just stand on the court and try to hit it back across the court to some other friend of mine who also doesn't really know how to play tennis. So I was like a beginner noob, you know, I didn't. I had no idea what I was doing, but he was doing great at teaching me. But then I had to stop. I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. All right, so this happens fairly often too. Uh, as you can see here, the middle section, the middle portion of the doodle kind of stayed as a abstract mass and 
parts that we can recognize with this little guy with an arm and his tongue sticking out are really the only recognizable parts. And sometimes that happens too, and it's okay. Sometimes the whole thing pulls together a little more, which is kind of what I wanted to happen. But sometimes art doesn't go the way we want, but it still goes. And you just got to hang on and go with it and don't try to fight it too much, okay? That's really all I'm going to say about that. We drew something, and that's good. Don't beat ourselves up about it too much. Let's move on to the next drawing. Yeah, so then I had to stop my tennis lessons, and it's because I was practicing the one-hand backhand, or as he called it, uh, the, as, as my tennis coach called it, a one right? Because the two-hand backhand is called a two-y. It all sounds very cool, I know. Um, because I, as I was swinging up, I was doing the follow through on the one, on the one E and on this follow through, your hand shoots up way up high behind you, uh, like almost like straight up and a very high vector up behind you. My shoulder dislocated and popped right out of its socket and I collapsed onto the ground in great pain and agony. And I was lying there writhing until my shoulder popped popped back into its socket and then I got up and I was just kind of like kneeling there on the ground and my tennis coach was just like looking at me uh you know, Jeff you know he was just like looking at me just kind of uh, amazed and a little bit terrified and scared and I'm like it's okay uh that, <laughs> that happens all the time uh but I mean it hurts and it's sore and also my my forearm on my left hand, it, this, that was my right shoulder, and then also my forearm on my left hand was sore from doing the two hand back hand that I was trying to switch away from. It was this whole big thing. All right, so here at this point, it's a little bit earlier than the point at which I called it in the last drawing, but here I'm gonna go ahead and call it. Um, there's kind of like a, a nose here, like Squidward sort of nose, and this I think I'm gonna turn into a big mouth. Maybe this is an eye right here. The square thing could be an eye. This could be another eye maybe. Um, there's like a flowery thing here. Maybe I'll make it look like there's like scents, the smell from the flowers wafting up into the mouth and the nose or something. And then I'll turn this into a big weird head or something. Maybe there'll be arms and hands or something. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe a lot of the time when I do this stuff, it ends up looking like faces. I'm not sure I'll have to do more research on that sort of thing, but let's just keep drawing for now. So yeah, I told Jeff that yeah, my shoulder has been dislocating intermittently for like eight years. It happened the first time, I think, when I was playing tetherball at summer camp. Yeah, I know. Hit me with the Napoleon Dynamite references. I was playing tetherball. It always happens when I have my arms up over my heads, my head. And then it happened maybe the next time when I was playing basketball. And then later, it's it's happened since then so many times. And I, I thought at first it was only one of my shoulders. But now it's happened with both of my shoulders. Um, since then, it's happened when I was swimming, which was terrible because I thought I was going to drown. But I had to, like, swim with just my legs back to the side of the pool because I was one arm was totally, you know, disabled because it was dislocated and I had to hold it with my other arm. And then, uh, and th th there were some other people at the pool, but they had no idea what was going on. And so I somehow got out of the pool and got it back in by myself. Sometimes it, sometimes the shoulder goes back in by itself and sometimes it really doesn't. Um, and then the more it happens, like cr the more it happens in, in a short span of time, it seems like the weaker my shoulder gets, right? Like the ligaments are, and the muscles get kind of stretched out and it is more prone to happen. And it's, it's, at one point it was happening so much that it, it was even happening when I wasn't doing any sports, right? Like it, would, it happened one time when I was in Chicago and I was just sitting on the train. It just, I was just sitting there and my shoulder just fell out of its socket. I was just sitting there on the train just like silently crying like <laughs> in great pain. One time I woke up in bed, I was lying on my stomach, which is awful because I woke up and my shoulder was out of its socket. And, and, I, and I always pop my shoulder back in on my back. I didn't know how to do it on my stomach. So I had to 
it took me like 15 minutes to figure out how to turn on turn around onto my back to to pop it back in and anyways so it's both my shoulders have popped out multiple times and it's happened during you know like playing volleyball and stuff and so this this time at tennis was just kind of like the last straw and I had to so I mean this guy was very accommodating Jeff he's like he's like he's like I've worked I've worked with people who've you know had these problems before we can work through we can figure out a way to you know you know not injure you anymore and uh he he's very understanding and he 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 thought we could figure something out but I was just like I just don't want to injure myself anymore I spent this is going this has been going on for too long it's been happening too many times and I can't let this just continually hang over my head of fear of my shoulder popping out of its socket I mean I'm recording this now it happened like a week ago and my shoulder is still a little bit sore right okay this one turned out pretty interesting uh it kind of reminds me of, I think there's a character in Spongebob or something, of a guy that has a starfish on his face or something. I, I don't know if that's what I'm thinking of, but there's some character, I think I've seen before, that has that looks roughly like this, and I can't tell if I'm like subconsciously copying it or not. You ever felt like that? You're like, am I copying something? Or how original of a thought is this? Anyways, I had fun drawing this. I like the kind of handlebar mustache look. Uh, and the the swirly stuff and the flowers around it. And he's got the bolo tie here. I think it turned out pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one here. So I don't know exactly what's wrong with my shoulders or why I'm talking about it so long, but I finally, with the, I don't know, it finally took like a little bit of encouragement from some of my friends, like, Peter, are you going to just let this, let this shoulder problem, like, dictate your whole life I'm like it's not really dictating my whole life it's just you know affecting my choices to do some extracurricular sports and hobbies and stuff but then I realized realized that the ability to do a lot of these sports and hobbies really could improve my life so I finally called my doctor and got them to got them to refer me to uh, I called and I was like yeah can can I get like a referral to like a like a physical therapist or something. And of course I, they never let me like talk right to my doctor or anything. So that sh I just like talked to some, I don't, I don't know who I talked to, like a nurse or a receptionist or something. I'm not saying they're the same thing, but I talked to someone and then she like took, took some notes and then she called me back and told me what the doctor said. And I said a few more things. Then she called me back later and Eventually, she referred me to a, an orthopedist, I think. Wait, wait, I took a note. Yeah, some sort of orthopedist, I think. So, and then eventually, the orthopedist called me. That might not, might not be the right, right, right word for it, or what it's called. It's, I don't know all the types of doctors. So anyways, I have an appointment tomorrow to go see some special kind of doctor, I hope, and hopefully it'll work and help, and... I'll figure out some kind of exercises or special things I can do. I mean, back in the day, I mean, my mom's a nurse and I always told her, you know, what was going on with me and what kind of pains and stuff I had. And she always, you know, would send me like a YouTube link to some exercises I could do or like a, like a wiki how to strengthen your shoulder after you dislocate it or whatever. And that was helpful, but I need like some accountability, like a professional look at it, you know, to... I don't know. Got I gotta I need some real help here. And I think it'll help. I think it'll work. I'm I'm cautiously actually I'm more than cautiously optimistic. I'm I'm hap, haphazardly optimistic that it'll all be okay. I don't think I've done any real permanent damage to my to my shoulders. I've probably dislocated my right shoulder maybe 12 times and my left shoulder four times and I mean I actually I'm a little bit hesitant maybe it's only this last time that I've started feeling like some uh little little pops or clicks in my shoulder but that's what it, that's the only thing that I'm a little bit hesitant about that, that never happened before So 
So this one didn't really turn out to be anything at any point. There was only a stage one, the abstract, and no actual. But that's okay. If, first of all, I think I was psyching myself out a little bit by making a video specifically about two things. Uh, making a video about a process that usually happens kind of subconsciously with me. And I think I also made a couple of these other drawings a little bit different or weird. But I mean, there's still cool drawings. I like them. But I'm just noticing. I'm trying to keep tabs of some of my own thoughts and stuff. But anyways, I still like how this little drawing turned out. And I like some of this white space around here. I like it. Anyways. And certainly all of my drawings, I'm realizing, don't have those two stages. So now I'm wondering if I really should put that title in, you know, my drawing, the two stages of every doodle, but I think it sounds a lot better. Is that okay to still do that? I'll just say the two stages of a doodle. That sounds better. But it's not quite as clickbaity. Anyways, another cool drawing here. Turned out cool. I like it a lot, even though it's just a tangled mass of lines. Still a big fan of it. Bloop. All right, let's do the last one. Let's see what happens, all right? No pressure. We just gotta draw. Anyways, enough about me. How are, how are all of your shoulders doing? I know, it's like you always hear about these people. Uh, I'm 29 now, right? And then all the... You know, I've listened to lots of stand-up comedy and people just telling jokes and stuff. And they always say, you know, as you're getting older, whenever you get injuries, sometimes you just, stuff, start, stuff starts hurting and then it just never stops hurting. It's like you wake up one day with a knee pain and then it just never goes away or something like that. And I hope that's not the case here because I don't, I don't know, I kind of like my shoulders. Maybe I can, maybe I can get new ones. I'm ready for the for shoulder technology to make great advancements and leaps and bounds forward. They can get a nice new pair of titanium shoulders. I mean, we've got nice new titanium pens. I mean, I've got a few nice titanium pens here that I haven't looked at yet, so uh, I've got to show you those sometimes, sometime soon. Got a, got a few pens here on deck, in fact, that I haven't showed you guys yet. So, I mean, there's plenty of, plenty of things here. Uh, and maybe one day I'll do like new titanium shoulder review. Is it worth it? Only twenty five thousand dollars. Because at one point I was gonna get like, like I had I had braces in middle school, and then I got them off. But I think I got my braces too soon, and then I have like a huge underbite right now. See, my bottom teeth are like in front of my top teeth. And the only way to fix it, apparently, is to get jaw surgery in which they pretty much just take a little hammer and break my jaw, take a slice out of it, and then, like, tie it back together, right? And then I, I went to get, like, a quote on this, and it apparently it costs, like, $13,000, and I don't even know if my insurance covers it because they're like, oh, yeah, that's a cosmetic surgery. It kind of is cosmetic surgery, though, because I can eat fine. And it's like not affecting my bite at all, right? And I look okay already. I'm pretty pretty, as as it as it is already. Anyways, I don't really know what else to say about my bodily woes at the moment. I'm doing okay. Everything's fine, really. That's that's what this video was—just me complaining about my shoulders. I'll let you know if anything else starts falling up, falling falling apart, falling off of me. For a while, I was having this problem where my hips were clicking if I ran too much. But the bikes, the bike seems to be a little bit less uh, joint intensive, right? I think don't they say that swimming is the most is the easiest on the joints? Plus, it also uses the most muscles on your body. It would be nice to go swimming, but kind of public swimming pools kind of freak me out a little bit. And I don't have another, I don't have a private swimming pool. There is a swimming pool here at my apartment complex, but it's not really good for doing laps in. 
Well, actually, maybe it is. But that's a little bit, that's like halfway between public and private. It's like, we're trying to mix public and private together. Priblic. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Let's uh, wrap this up. All right, so in a sense, I messed up on this one, partly because, well, mainly because I didn't really notice when it switched from being just a bunch of hatch hatch marks, a bunch of like little parallel lines. I, don't, I didn't really notice when the switchover happened. <sighs> I was just like doodling around here, right? Around, uh, where's my pointer? around like this area, a bunch of parallel lines, hatching, cross hatching. And then at some point I was drawing what to me seems like a spaceship kind of docking at some sort of docking station on, here's the planet surface. And here's a little building, some kind of arms, something plugs into the spaceship here. I'm not really sure what this is. Maybe some, I don't know. It's okay. but. That one was too subtle for me to even notice, but in there somewhere it happened some kind of, cause I didn't, I didn't set out to draw this spaceship is what I'm trying to say. But at some point I did realize I was drawing a spaceship. So that was, I don't mean, I don't think the drawing is a mistake, but I did mess up in that I didn't, didn't manage to stop and notice when the switchover was happening, which is okay. Not the end of the world, but I do. It's okay. All right. Here's the four drawings we did today. Hope you enjoyed them. Let me get a better angle with the camera. All right, there we go. One, two, three, four. I'm pretty happy with what we did. I pretty much, pretty much drew for several hours today. It turned out pretty good. I like this. I like this idea of drawing like four smaller things. I mean, the bigger drawings feel good too. There's like a sense of accomplishment that goes along with it, but these are good too. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Good to see all of you. Hope you have a good one, all right? Bye.